Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. This is our first podcast of Let's Master English, and it's also my first podcast ever in the world. So I am a bit nervous. Let me tell you about Let's Master English. This podcast is broken into three parts. The first part will be news. I'll give you a headline or an interesting story, something that is not too serious, and you're going to learn some vocabulary, some pronunciation, and hopefully improve your listening skills. The next section will be Q&A, questions and answers. In this section, I take your questions, and I already have a lot of them, and I'll do my best to answer them. And the final section will be English tips, advice on how you can study English. According to the title of the podcast, I would guess that your goal is to master English. So. Let's master English. Oh, and there will be one bonus section. A lot of people have told me that they like the Wisconsin or the country Shane speaking style. So, country Shane will join us in the middle to educate us, to give us an interesting fact, and you can share that fact with your friends. I believe Country Shane is getting his facts from the Factual Cat, and you can follow the Factual Cat on Twitter at Factual Cat. Now, in the future, I should add, I hope to add interviews. What I want to do is interview other famous English teachers, especially out there on YouTube, and maybe I'll interview some of you too. So that's what Let's Master English is going to be about. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question or if you have a comment, please feel free to send me an email. The email address is podcast p o d c a s t at letsmasterenglish dot com. That's podcast at letsmasterenglish dot com. So, are you ready? Let's go for it. A South African chef is being booted out of New Zealand because he's too fat. The 130 kilogram corpulent cook has been told his health is at risk and can therefore no longer be allowed a work visa. With nearly 30 percent of the Kiwis overweight. The last thing Christchurch wants to deal with is overly fleshy foreigners. So how was it? Pretty easy? No, I know it's quite difficult. I read it fast. There are some new words for you. So this time, why don't I read it a little bit more slowly? That should be easier for you. Let's try it. A South African chef. Is being booted out of New Zealand because he's too fat. The 130 kilogram corpulent cook has been told his health is at risk and can therefore no longer be allowed a work visa. With nearly 30 percent of the Kiwis overweight, the last thing Christchurch wants to deal with is overly fleshy foreigners. Was that a bit easier? I hope so. But there are some words that we need to discuss. So let's go back to the first sentence. A South African chef. Okay, so we know the country South Africa, and from that country there's a chef. C H E F. A chef is a cook. C O O K. Now my mom is a cook. Even I am a cook. Maybe you are a cook, but are we chefs? So we have to distinguish when we talk about the profession. Chefs are professional cooks. 
Now, sometimes we call a person at a restaurant who cooks meals a cook and not a chef. So when we say chef, we're actually referring to somebody with very specific training. They went to school to learn culinary arts. That is, the art of cooking. Now, if you go to your high school cafeteria or to McDonald's, we don't call those people chefs. We call them cooks. My mother, she's a great cook. Sometimes she cooks like a chef, but I don't think she's had special training. Me, I'm just a regular cook. So this person is a chef. That means he's a professional. A South African chef is being booted out of New Zealand because he's too fat. So booted out of New Zealand. New Zealand, once again, the country. Booted out. This is a phrasal verb, to boot out. It's the same as to kick out. Now think about a boot, B-O-O-T. It's a type of footwear, like a cowboy boot, or an army boot, or a work boot. So boots are big and they're heavy. Booted out, kicked out. Oh, it makes perfect sense. So this is a new phrasal verb for many of you, to boot somebody out. Have you ever been booted out of some place? One time in high school, I was booted out of history class. Why? Because I was causing problems. Can you think of an example when you were booted out? So once again, this is terrible. A South African chef is being booted out of New Zealand because he's too fat. The 130 kilogram corpulent cook. Okay, 130 kilograms. Yes, that's very big. Corpulent, C-O-R-P-U-L-A-N-T. Corpulent, one more time, C-O-R-P-U-L-A-N-T. Corpulent. Corpulent means fat. It's a synonym for the word fat. It means very big, very large, roly-poly, tubby. The 130 kilogram corpulent cook. So here we have an interesting speech pattern. We have kilogram corpulent cook. We have k k k. This is called alliteration. And in many news stories, the writers like to create alliteration because it sounds interesting and it's actually easier to remember and to understand. The 130 kilogram corpulent cook has been told, what was he told? His health is at risk. Ah, yes. If you are overweight, if you are obese, then yes, your health is at risk. You might get a disease like diabetes. You might have heart problems. So this is very serious, being overweight. So, the 130 kilogram corpulent cook has been told his health is at risk and can therefore no longer be allowed a work visa. Okay, so for several years he has had a work visa and he's been a chef in New Zealand. But this year, when he went to renew his visa, they said, no, we're sorry, you are too fat. Now, actually, they didn't tell him he was too fat. The word fat is a rude word. I'm sure they said, you are overweight, or perhaps they said, you are obese. So, is that a good reason to not give somebody a work visa? Well, it might be because if he's working in the country and he develops a disease like diabetes, then he needs help and he needs insurance. And I believe in New Zealand, the government helps pay the medical bills. So that means the government 
must pay for a foreigner's medical bills. And the government of New Zealand does not want to do that. So let's look at the next sentence. With nearly 30% of the Kiwis overweight. So nearly 30% of the Kiwis are overweight. But I didn't say are overweight. I started with with. With nearly 30% of the Kiwis overweight. What is a Kiwi? K-I-W-I-S, plural. Capital K, it's a big letter K. Kiwis is a nickname for New Zealanders. People from New Zealand are sometimes called Kiwis. Nearly 30% of the Kiwis are overweight. Oh my goodness, this is a very bad situation for the country. With nearly 30% of the Kiwis overweight, the last thing Christchurch wants to deal with is overly flashy foreigners. The last thing Christchurch wants to deal with. Christchurch, what is that? That's the capital of New Zealand. So when we say Christchurch, we're referring to the capital, the government. If we're talking about the United States, we could say Washington or Washington, D.C. If we're talking about Russia, we could say Moscow. So when we say Moscow does not want to talk to Washington, that refers to the government. And in this case, with nearly 30% of the Kiwis overweight, the last thing Christchurch wants to deal with, the last thing the New Zealand government wants to handle, wants to take care of, is overly fleshy foreigners. Once again, we have alliteration. Overly fleshy foreigners. Overly, O-V-E-R-L-Y, fleshy, F-L-E-S-H-Y, foreigners. So we have a V-F-F, overly fleshy foreigners. So overly fleshy, foreigners, no problem, people from another country. Overly fleshy means too much flesh. Flesh is another word for skin. So too much flesh, too much skin means too fat, overweight, obese, roly-poly, pudgy, corpulent. It's the same idea as fat, fat foreigners. Do you understand the situation? So once again, this is actually a serious news story. This man and his wife have been living in New Zealand for several years. And what's really interesting, when he first came to New Zealand, he weighed 160 kilograms. So he's actually lost weight. And now the government is telling him, you cannot stay? What do you think? Is that fair or unfair? I don't know. It is unhealthy. However, he has been losing weight. In fact, he weighs less now than when he first came to the country. So shouldn't the country take that into consideration? Hmm. Well, the wife and husband are, of course, arguing this to the New Zealand government. So I don't know what will happen. But I do hope he gets the chance to stay. There must be a reason he and his wife left South Africa to move to New Zealand. It must be a very good reason. So good luck to him. And especially, I hope that he is able to lose more weight. This is the first time I've ever heard of somebody's visa being turned down because of being overweight. So if you're thinking about immigrating to another country, you might want to get yourself in good physical shape. Now, I'm going to read this story two more times. The first time will be a little bit slow, and I hope that you understand it perfectly. The second time is going to be really fast. Are you ready? A South African chef is being booted out of New Zealand because he's too fat. The 130-kilogram corpulent cook 
has been told his health is at risk and can therefore no longer be allowed a work visa. With nearly 30% of the Kiwis overweight, the last thing Christchurch wants to deal with is overly fleshy foreigners. A South African chef is being booted out of New Zealand because he's too fat. The 130 kilogram corpulent cook has been told his health is at risk and can therefore no longer be allowed a work visa. With nearly 30% of the Kiwis overweight, the last thing Christchurch wants to deal with is overly fleshy foreigners. Okay, it's time for our Q&A section, and today we have a question from Mikhail. Mikhail from Moscow. He wants to know everything there is to know about subways. Now, that's a terrible question, Mikhail. How am I supposed to answer this question? Well, I decided I'll talk about vocabulary. Now, actually, I've only been on one subway in America, and that was in San Francisco. And the San Francisco subway system is called BART, B-A-R-T. And that stands for Bay Area Rapid Transport. It's transport or transportation? I'm not sure. Anyway, BART. Now, I do live in Seoul, South Korea. Well, near Seoul. And in Korea, some of the subway lines are called SMART, Seoul. Metropolitan Area Rapid Transport. So each city will have a different name for its subway system. London has a different name. New York has a different name. Chicago has a different name. So depending on the city you go to, some of the vocabulary might be a little bit different. So make sure you do some good research. Of course, when you go to the subway station, you need to have a ticket. In San Francisco, they have the BART card. That's a card that looks like a credit card, but in the card you have money. You can charge the card by putting money into the card, $10, $20. And every time you want to use the subway and even the buses, you swipe your card over the reader. So when you enter the subway station, there's a gate. And the gate is usually called a turnstile. And on top of the turnstile, there's an area where you set your card. And you just put it there for a second and take it away, and the subway fee is automatically deducted from your card. If you don't have enough money, then you need to go to a machine. It looks like a vending machine, and it will charge your card just like charging the battery on your phone. So you put your card in the machine and then you add $10 or $20 and your card is good to go. In every city, the name of the card is different. I think in London, it's called an Oyster card. Why an Oyster? I don't know. Also in London, when they talk about the subway, they have two words underground, and tube. So the tube is actually the subway. In America, we just say subway. We get on the subway and we get off the subway. Sometimes we need to transfer trains or transfer subways. So we start on one train and then we transfer to another train. Transfer stations can be very confusing. In New York City, several different trains will go to the same station, to the same track. So you really have to pay attention to the front of the train where they have the final destination printed. In some cities, the trains, or subways, are named by colors. The blue line, the green line, the orange line. In some cities, they're named by the final destination which can be a location, and it can be a street name. For example, in New York City, the Lexington Line. I highly recommend that you go to the city's subway site online to get the best information. But it's not that complicated. 
it's actually very easy, and I hope I've answered some of your questions. <laughs> How you doing everybody? This is Country Shane and I'm here to bring you a fact. A strawberry is not an actual berry, but a banana is. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Okay, it's time for today's English tip. And, oh, come on. This is a podcast. And this is all about listening. So, one really important thing, if you want to master English, is you have to use English every day. Now, I know sometimes it's very difficult to speak English. Maybe there are no foreigners around you. Maybe your family doesn't want to speak English with you. Maybe you're all alone. Well, even if you're alone, I want you to repeat after me. But minimally, at a minimum, you have to listen every day. That's why I'm making this podcast. This is one tool you can use to listen to English. Now, you can sit at your desk and listen. But the nice thing about a podcast is you can wash dishes and listen. You can be driving and listen. You can be exercising. You can be doing anything and listen. Even at the office, turn the volume down low and listen. Podcasts are a great tool to keep you in practice. Now, only by listening, you will never master English. But by improving your listening skills, you will improve your confidence and it will have an effect on your pronunciation. So once again, the tip of the day is to listen. Listen to English as much as possible. It can be my podcast. It can be other podcasts. It can be pop songs. If you're a Justin Bieber fan, listen to Bieber. If you're a Queen fan, listen to Queen. Whatever the music is that you like, listen to it in English. Listen to the news. CNN is pretty difficult, but things like NPR, that's National Public Radio, that's not too bad. There are many talk shows and radio stations that you can find online too. Of course, it's going to be really difficult to understand everything, but once again, use it as background noise. Create an environment of English around you. Now, if you're not exercising, if you don't clean your room, if you're not a dishwasher, this is an excellent excuse to start. Start exercising, just walking. Start cleaning your room. Start doing the dishes. And while you do it, it will be your personal time to listen to English. Listening to a podcast, listening to the news, listening to a radio station. All of these are available online. If you have a smartphone, that's the easiest way. But the nice thing about podcasts is you can download them directly to your phone. And this podcast will be yours forever. Well, I'm sure eventually you will delete it. And that's been podcast number one for Let's Master English. Once again, my name is Coach Shane. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. I'm very curious as to whether you liked it. I would like your criticism, your compliments, and I would also like to tell you, there will be a transcript. Everything I said, you can read it. And I will put this on my website. And my website is not ready yet. So hopefully, I don't know, by podcast three or podcast four, the website will be up and running. And then you can go back to podcast number one 
and find the transcript there. So podcast three, podcast four, you have to listen to that. And then I'll give you the, the website address and you can find the transcripts. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and uh, that's it. And let's master English.